On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look, but do not see, and hear, but do not listen or understand. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, and the evil one comes and steals it away. What was sown in his heart? The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety, the lure of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As someone who likes to garden, I hope you enjoy some tomatoes that brought a while back to Arnold Moore. I know well what Jesus is describing. And that was the whole idea of why Jesus would speak in parables, because they could touch people where we are. We could understand them readily. So if you're a gardener, you can understand uh, what he's talking about. And I just bought some seeds the other day. And Walgreens was there. They were cheap. And I bought them. I'm hoping they'll come up, because every time I seem to buy a pack of seeds, they never seem to grow. So. I can understand what Jesus is talking about today. And what he's talking about is the word that we hear. This past week has been a very exciting week, a distressing week at the same time. It's been dominated by three events. One is kind of bittersweet and sad. That is the the fact that the last shuttle rocket went up, of course, it leaves the idea and the opportunity and opening for something greater to come. But at this point in time, with a great roar, the rocket went up safely, thank goodness, and signaled the end of that particular phase of our, of our time that we are sending such rockets up. And now we need to decide what we're going to do. So as exciting as it was for the thousands and thousands of people, it's also a sad time for people who lose their jobs and we have to move on. But it was a spectacular event to watch. The second event that dominated our lives for three years, but especially in this past week, was the Casey Anthony case. My goodness. You know, I would talk to people and say, well, I've been watching it. They say, I'm tired of watching it. And I'd say, I am too. But we all were focused upon what was going on. And afterwards, on the verdict, was it right? Was it wrong? 
And as was mentioned before mass, and was mentioned in the paper, there where uh, Kaylee's body was found, a tree was hit by lightning. So some people are taking that as meaning that God is speaking, giving the judgment as we heard. But uh, I had another thought on that, and I think that God was telling everybody, stay away. This is, end this case. We've heard too much about it. It's time for us to put it behind us. But whatever it is that it has been a distraction, but it's been a distraction. It doesn't really affect our lives, except if we want to learn how the court works. And I'm sure it was an education for many, many people to see this. So I suppose in that way, it's a good thing. But it's something that we want to move on from. And it was a great distraction. But the third thing is something that is not a distraction, and it is something that affects each and every one of us, whether we are going to like it or not. And that is, of course, the whole thing about the financial situation of our country and the meeting that the President and the members of Congress are going to be having even today to decide what should be done. And we hear dire predictions, and we hear a lot of discussion about this, but this is something that's going to affect our lives. This is the important event of this past week, and it's, as we know, it's not over yet, and it will affect each of our lives in whatever way that is finally decided. How should we react to this? Now, I think we should react to this with the faith that we have in our hearts, the faith that we have in Jesus. And although perhaps it is a bit on the trite side to ask WWJD, what would Jesus do? It is a legitimate question. How would Jesus react to what is going on in the halls of Congress and in Washington? The only way that we can know what Jesus would do and how we should follow is to know what Jesus had to say and to study the scriptures. Because this is the words that affect our lives and guide us. And it's not so easy for us to uh, be able to discern this. In the medieval times, people believed that they asked the question, how was Jesus conceived? We know that in the scripture it said that the Holy Spirit came upon, the blessed, upon Mary and she conceived and bore a son and gave him the name Jesus. But they were asking, and as people will do, how was he actually conceived? And we know how, what sexual intercourse is all about and how it's done. We're all adults, so we're all aware of how it is. But in those times, people had different beliefs about this and they believed that and it was taught that uh, Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit coming through Mary's ear. Now that might strike us as kind of funny, because we know it's not usually done that way, but actually we really don't know how it happened. But it's really a, a kind of uh, important thing, because for each of us, Jesus is conceived just in that way. We come here today, so... And we often say that we come here so that we can get Jesus inside us, so that Jesus can be a part of our lives. So Jesus has to be within us. And Jesus does come to us through our ears. He is conceived in us through our ears because we hear this word. This word leads us to there, to the Eucharist. But if we didn't hear the word first and believe in it, then that would be meaningless and would be something that why bother doing because it doesn't have any meaning for us. And that's what Jesus told us today in, the, in this gospel that we've heard. That the word has to come and has to be in our heart and that because it's in our self, in our very beings, that we have to hear it, but not just hear it, we have to understand it. And not only understand it, we have to act on it. Jesus said, the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, and then bears fruit and yields a hundred or sixty or thirty fold. I thought that was very interesting, don't you? That he didn't say, well, you have to be a hundred percent all the time. He said, you could be a hundred percent, sixty percent, thirty percent, 
Maybe you only have to be 5%. But you have to do something. It's, it's that we need to know what we believe in. We have to research. And it's not just enough to read the scriptures. And I think that that's an important point. Because there are many people who say, well, I'm just going to read the scriptures and I'll interpret it for myself. And this has been a historical argument that has come down through the ages. At one time in the Middle Ages, the church said, locked up the Bible and said, you can't read it. Only the monks and the people who are learned can read it. And we'll interpret it for you. And in some ways, we still say that. The part of the Protestant Reformation was, oh, we don't believe that. No, no, we're going to read the Bible. We're going to interpret it for ourselves. We'll decide what it's saying to us. And that's good, but it's also dangerous because we can come away with the wrong interpretations. Now, I'll give you a perfect example of something that's very prominent in our society what we're talking about today. And, and, and that is, you know, about the, you know, the whole gay thing in our society, the marriage and the rest. And, you know, and some people are saying about it, including in the, in the Catholic Church, you know, about what gay being gay is and, you know, is it right, is it wrong, is it disordered or whatever, and they have a biblical interpretation on this. And other churches, like the United Church of Christ and the Episcopal Church, are saying, no, 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 we don't believe it in that way. There are other interpretations to these very same scripture verses that other people are using. So we can have one scripture verse being interpreted one way by somebody, and we have another scripture verse being interpreted a totally different way by somebody. So what is the real thing? That's why it's important for us to do that research and that understanding so that we know what Jesus did say. Remember, the words we hear are a, a translation. We, we need to find out what did Jesus really mean? What did the prophets really mean when they, when they, um, uh, when they wrote? You know, because they wrote many years ago and things may have meant a whole different thing to them than it, uh, than it means to us. Today, I think of that little old poker game that's often used with children or wherever, you know, where you get a whole line of people and you whisper something in somebody's ear and then they whisper it to somebody's ear and when it comes out at the end, it can be totally different than what was originally said. And that's the same way with the scripture. That's why it's important for us to know what the scripture is about. And that's why I wanted to encourage you when you read your scripture, not just to read scripture, but also to read commentaries, even from the Bible. There are often interpretations that are given in the beginning. But it's important for us to know what Jesus had to say if we're going to act in the right way on it. And today, as the, with the events that's going on, we need to know, is Jesus saying we should solve our financial problems? How should we solve them? Should we solve them on the backs of the poor? Should we solve them by taxing the rich? How should we solve them? It's not my purpose or my place to give an answer to that, but it's my purpose or place to encourage us to think about that and to say, what would Jesus do so that we can encourage those that are appointed leaders to act in the right way according to what we believe in? Otherwise, why bother believing? So let us pray on those matters today. But not only just pray on those matters, let's hear that word so that we're not the seed that pulls, pulls among thorns when we get a little bit anxious or riches will choke it away, or that this rocky ground in our hearts that we don't even hear the word. There's a lot of people like that. But let's be the people who hear the word, understand the word, act on the word, no matter how big or how small it may be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.